worship you. Thank you, Father, for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I invite your Holy Spirit this morning, Father, to fill every heart in this place this morning and every desire, may every desire in this place come to your throne room this morning. And may you pour your grace and your blessings upon each and every one. Bless us this morning as we gather around your word. Reveal your word to us, Father. I pray that your Holy Spirit would drive this word into our hearts and make us acceptable so we can understand what your will for us is. I thank you this morning, Father. I pray for every church in this area, every pastor, every man or woman of God preaching the word of God this morning. I pray for them. And I pray that your will be done in churches. May you bring unity in our country, Father. May you help us to understand what your will is for us. Father, bind every division, every plan from Satan to bring division. I cancel it in Jesus' name. And I pray that, that your will will be, will be done in our lives, each and every one of us. Father, and I also pray for the sick. This morning while I, I hear of the many people dying of this virus across the world and also in South Africa. I pray this morning and I pray to help our leadership with wisdom and insight. To help them to make the right decisions at the right time. So, so the children of this land can benefit and reap the good fruits that you have prepared for us. Bless our country. Help our leaders. It's my prayer this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to you. My name is Henry van Niekerk. I'm the resident pastor of Higher Grace Church. It's a privilege for myself to be, this, be here this morning. And I want to thank the music team this morning. And I want to thank God this morning for being able to live. Do you know that how many people were, were put last night in that cold refrigerators? Which will never ever have a chance again on this life to worship God. Yesterday they were full of plans. Yesterday morning they still had made plans for Christmas. Yesterday morning they had many, many thoughts of what to do and what to buy. Some of them maybe were on their way doing shopping. And this morning their footsteps on this earth is gone. The plans that we have today doesn't always mean that they will come forth tomorrow. It's only by the grace of God that we have fresh air in our lungs every day. I want to talk to you this morning, uh, but before I further ado, I would like to call Pastor Lucky up forward today. His birthday today. Can we sing him a song? Can we sing him happy birthday to you? It's always a privilege to, to be with someone that I know this is social distancing, so, so we'll stand like this. But gee, it's his birthday, brother. Won't you just raise out your hands to him this morning and, 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 and just speak a blessing over his life. He's, he's, he's such a blessing to me. He's such a true man of God. This and, and Pastor Lucky, may God bless you in this year ahead. May I uplift you and strengthen you and, and, and give you all the courage that you need to, to live the life that, that he has ordained for you. May the riches and the grace of God be upon your life in every area, in every matter, in every, every challenge that you accept. May God protect you like he protected King David out of the lion and the bear's hands. May he give you the strength and the courage to do whatever he's pleased you, for you to do. May the blood of Jesus protect you and your family. And may the best, the best of the year 2021 follow you. And God give you all the best of the harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give him a great hand of applause. Thank you, Pastor. Now, as you know me, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a guy who takes too long preaching. But I, I really felt that this word can maybe change some of your lives, uh, hopefully, and also change mine. Without further ado, let me read. There's quite a few, few verses that I want to read to you. It's in the book of Kings, 1 Kings verse, uh, chapter 19 from verse 1. I think they've prepared it for the board. So I'm going to read up till verse 13. So let's read it together. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, 
And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by the narrow about this time, by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went uh, for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Verse 4 says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. Just remember that scripture. And said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my father's. Verse 5, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, the angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a curse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Verse 8, and he arose and he did eat and drink and went in the strength of the meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What does thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken the, thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thine prophets with the sword, and I even only am left, and I seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and, and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and broke it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still and small voice. And the last verse I'm going to read is verse 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the in entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? That's far in the word of God. A very interesting happening here for one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. Elijah was a, was a magnificent man of God. He had authority in the spiritual realm, which many pastors and prophets through the ages dreamt of having. But before, before maybe I tell you what really happened here, maybe I must just give you a little bit of background what, what happened here. The Bible, this, 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 area, this plays out about seven to 800 years before Christ. Uh, Solomon died after he built the temple. And uh, his son became king and the son of him. And then the next man by the name of Omri had this, uh, had this guy who's by the name of Ahab. And Ahab, Ahab grew up under, under the laws of God. But, but Ahab took a woman uh, uh, by the name of Jezebel. And, and Jezebel uh, uh, never wanted to serve God. She served a God by the name of Baal. Now, Baal was... Uh, was the religion of the East. They were, they, were, uh, they were believing in this God, Baal. He was the God of fertility. And he was also the God who gave rain on, in seasons, according to these people of the East. And as this king of Israel grew up, and his father died, and he became the king, he married this woman. And uh, this woman caught him uh, in such a manner that he started turning away from Lord God Jehovah. And the people started building altars all around them, serving this Baal God. And uh, they tried their level best to, to have rituals and orgies uh, in this country and uh, all of them to, to get rain. And then God spoke to Elijah and, and God said to Elijah, Elijah, I want you to go down to, to Israel, to Ahab, and tell him that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the rains. I'm going to stop the rains on earth. 
because that these people think that, that the rains comes from their God. The rains comes from this, this God, Paul. And I want to show the people of the earth that I am the true living God and the only one who can give rains when rains is needed. And the Bible says that Elijah went and he prayed and for three and a half years, there fell not one drop of rain on the earth and also uh, there was not even dew in the morning. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That God is so powerful that he can keep rain and dew away from the earth for three and a half years on one man's prayer. And as, uh, as the time went on, uh, Ahab, you know that some people, some people listen when God speaks softly and some people only listen when God shouts at them. That's why it's sometimes difficult in a congregation when you preach because some people can, can take a few shots, but other people, if you hit them, they cry or die. And, and this was a difficult thing for, for God to, to speak to the people. And, and God commanded the, the rains to stay away from heaven for three and a half years. And the people kept on with their wickedness and their wickedness and their wickedness. But as the rain stayed away, you know how it works. People started looking for faults in their own life and and, and this country, the world became a terrible place to live. And God looked after Elijah. You know the story of, of how a, a, a crow looked after him for many months, bringing him twice a day, bringing him food, bringing him a morsel of bread in the morning and a piece of meat in the morning, and also did so in the evenings. But once the brook that God sent him to dried up, because, is, is, sorry, is this not too loud? Is the sound not too loud? Is it fine? I don't want to scream at you. And uh, so while, while he is, is, is God spoke to him and, and, and the crows come and feed him, the brook dries up. He hears he hears, his, the, he hears that uh, Ahab and this woman Jezebel wants to kill him. And so uh, Elijah is just traveling through, through this small uh, country of Israel, trying to stay out of the way of this, of this wicked king. And as the time went on, uh, uh, the, the, as the brook dried up, God sent Elijah to a widow. And the widow had to look after. You know the story, how, how the, the widow made him, gave him his, her last piece of bread and the last oil she had. And as she prepared food for Elijah so she and the son could die, uh, eat and die. That's what, a, what, what a, was a words to the prophet. Uh, God allowed that a, a miracle, a great miracle happened. And for all the rest of this famine, the oil, and, and the oil out of, uh, out of uh, that can that she had never dried up one, one moment. And the meal, the maize that she had never dried up one moment and her and the son could live. And uh, this man of God was, had such a close relationship with God that, that when, when this woman who looked after him, she had a young son, when this son died of sickness, uh, Elijah went and he was already died because the Bible said there was no breath in his lungs. And Elijah went and he prayed for this, this young man and God raised him from the dead. And the miracles that Elijah did in his lifetime, there were 16 miracles that he did, which was, some of them was great. But the greatest one is even mentioned in the book of James chapter 5 where, 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 where God speaks to his people through Jesus and says that, that Elijah was a man just like you. Yet he prayed and the rain stayed away for three and a half years. Telling us how that we should pray. Not stop and, and, and once we pray for something and it doesn't happen then we give up. You know a lot of times it happens like that. That we pray and we pray and we pray maybe twice, three times, four times for your son to give his heart to the Lord or, or the sickness in your family. And after the third time you've prayed, you think, ah, you know, I've prayed enough. I'm not going to pray about this anymore. And before you see, uh, you know, things get worse. And, and um, then you want to, some of us blame God and say, ah, oh, but Lord, you know, you didn't look after me. Why did I have to go through this trouble? And why did, you, why did my son have to die? And why did my father have to die? And you know, as, as human beings, we have a lot of questions sometimes when things go wrong in our lives. And as the time went on and, 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 and this famine became very great, the people still refused to turn back to God. 
And Elijah made a decision through the Holy Spirit. He went to Ahab and he said to Ahab, you know, King Ahab, there's been famine in this country for three and a half years. And God spoke through you. How is it that the people still do not turn to God? And, I, and, and Elijah said, you know what I think I should do? Did all these all these prophets of this Baal, there was 450 of the one and 400 of the other. Get these 850 prophets who serves this other God. Can we just get them together? And then let's test and see who is God. Let's, let's climb the Mount Carmel. Now, Mount Carmel uh, is a, it's a beautiful mountain. It's right in the northern side of Israel. I had the privilege to, to go there. I actually stood right on the place where, where this miracle happened. And uh, you overlook the sea. You overlook Istanbul. Uh, if you stand on the mountain, you look down, you see Istanbul, the old Constantinople. You look down, you see Istanbul right there. So you look over the sea. And these 850 people got together. And, and, and Elijah said, okay, it's a simple, let's do it very simple. Let's, you guys take a bull and you cut it up and we'll, I will take a bull and we'll cut it up and you build an altar and I will build an altar. And, and I, I will give you guys chance, you 850, we, let's put your bull on the altar and then you have the whole day to pray to your God and ask him to please show that he is the true God. By, by sending fire from heaven so everybody can see who's the real God. And uh, the people obviously accepted the challenge. And I can just imagine, now Mount Carmel is not a very high mountain. It's only about 600, 580, 600 meters high, which is just a bit more than, a, than um, a, a, less than a kilometer. It's about half the, half the size of 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 uh, the mountain in Cape Town, or half the size of the Michalisberg, <clears throat> although it seems higher. But while, while these people got gathered together, I can just see all of them standing there, and all these 850 priests walking up and down, and praying to their God that God has to answer this, this prayer now, and this prayer now. And as they were praying, there was nothing. Elijah even mocked them. He said to them at one stage, you know, why is your God not answering? Is maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's just taken a nap or maybe he's gone, he's gone on holiday. Maybe you must call harder. And the Bible says they even started taking knives and start cutting themselves. The bleeding. I can just imagine the sight where all these people are bleeding and, and calling and dancing and jumping and calling to their God. And Elijah, yeah, in the late afternoon got fed up with all this. And he decided, oh, well, you know, these guys God cannot answer. Well, he actually knew that from the beginning. Because once you've heard the true voice of God speaking to you, all other voices you can, you can definite very easily. Once God, once God has spoken in your ear, you will always remember that voice. And uh, eventually Elijah stood up and he said to these guys, you know, stand one side, man. Let me... Let me cut up my bull, my oxen. And uh, he took that bull of his and he cut it up in pieces. And he went to take 12 rocks, uh, 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 which he named by the 12, 12 uh, uh, Israeli uh, uh, nations, the 12 brothers. And he put these rocks on top of each other. And he took this bull of oxen and he cut it up and he put it on top of these rocks. And all these guys are now bleeding, watching. What is he doing now? He said to the guys, you know, get me some water. Get me four buckets of water. And they went and they grabbed four buckets of water. And he said, okay, well, throw it over this meat. And as they were throwing this over this meat, the water's running all over the place. And, and, and when once they done it once, he said, no, do it another time. And for a second time, they filled up those four buckets and they, they threw water. He says, no, do it a third time. And he went and he did it a third time. And, and, and they threw water. And the Bible says that there was so much water that around this, this, he actually dug a hole around this altar. And the water filled this whole place and filled the whole area around this altar. 
And once he's done that, I'm sure that these Baal worshippers were standing there. Like many, many people standing outside today when they know at your work that you're a Christian and they know that what you are standing for, they laugh at you. He says, ah, what do you want to do at church Sunday? We're going to the fish water, man. Don't talk nonsense. Let's go fish. We've got a party. We've got soccer. We've got this. No, sorry. I've got to go to the house of the Lord. What? The house of the Lord? For what? And those were the same type of people those days. And they were mocking and they were standing there and thinking, yeah, whatever. I'm sure that the whole day in the sun standing there, half of them wanted to turn around in any case. And then Elijah looked up to the heavens and he started praying. And he said, Lord, I, uh, let these people know I'm your servant. Let these people know that you are the God who answers with fire. And as Elijah spoke, the heavens broke open and fire came out of the heaven, consumed everything. He consumed the meat. He consumed the rocks. He consumed even the water in the sides. And these people had the fright of their lives. And then they, they, for the first time in their life, they knew that there's no other God to serve than Lord God Jehovah. And Elijah grabbed these 850 oaks, took them to the river, and killed all of them. Killed all of them. Even the last one. He said, you guys are taking God's people on the wrong path. You don't deserve to live on this earth anymore and kill them. And this was one of the greatest victories that Elijah had in his ministry by showing that God really works through him. But here comes the problem. Keeping the faith. It's easy to give if you have a lot. It's easy to smile when there's food on the table and money in the bank. It's easy to, to proclaim that God is good when all things in your life is going exactly as you planned. And this is why Elijah was, he just saw, imagine your prayer, imagine you could pray, and God answers your prayer in one moment with fire. And right after this, when Ahab got home, to his wife Jezebel, he told her about what happened on the Mount Carmel. He told her that uh, because these priests belong to her, he, he, Ahab said to his wife, he said, you know what, Lavi or sweetie or whatever he called her, he says, you know, that guy, he showed the whole of Israel who is God today. Oh, and those 850 oaks who used to work with for you, they are all dead because he killed him. And, and she was so furious that she, she sent a message to Elijah and said to Elijah, Elijah, by tomorrow this time, I will surely have killed you. This man of God who has just seen the power of God like never before. And as Elijah heard these words, this mighty man of war, this mighty man of God, had such a fright for this woman. The Bible says he ran into the desert. Now read verse 1 again. Then you'll understand better. Just put one, verse 1 for me up, please, if you don't mind. Now he's standing there, he just, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. She, he just told her now. And with, with hell, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message underlying, unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and, and went for his life, one of the translations said he ran for his life. And came to Beersheba, a which belongeth to Judah, and, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down on a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, oh Lord, take my life. I want to talk to you hastily this morning. I want to talk to you hastily this morning that when you're on the mountain, you need to know that there's a time for the valley also. You need to understand that keeping the faith is not an easy thing to do. 
It is not easy to stand firm in your faith when all things turn against you. It is not easy to stand in your faith when, when the, the bright and sunny day that you had yesterday is the exact opposite today. It's easy to have good news and to hear things are going to go well. But I tell you, the day that you have the news, that the least news you've expected, the call that says, I'm sorry, sir, your son died in a motor car accident. We, we, we were six children. My father and my, my grandfather and my grandmother worked for the Lord, I think, 48 years, full time in the ministry. My father, she had 10 children. My father was one of the children who never, he served God for three months and then stopped. Six months and then stopped. Two years and then stopped. Through his whole life, he died at the age of 42. My mother lost my eldest brother. He died in a, motor car, a motorcycle accident when he was 19. Then my, my sister, which was a year younger than I, died when she was 23. Then my other brother died. Out of six children, three years left, plus her husband. She lost four people in her family. But if you call her today and you ask her, who's the Lord of her life? She will tell you, Jesus Christ is the Lord of her life. Sometimes God allows you to go through trials and tribulations which in your mind does not, you don't understand why God allows this. Here the, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible runs away after one of the greatest achievements in his life. He runs away into the desert and when he speaks to God he says, oh Lord, I just want to die. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like, oh, I don't know what's worth living. I just want to die. I just want to die. Be careful so God doesn't grant that wish. Because he granted that wish on a, just in a different manner to Elijah. Now, when, when the angel appeared to Elijah, while he's standing down under this juniper, juniper tree, I can just imagine he is so, we've got Afrikaans word for it, gatvol. He's so hard for, for this life that he's, that he's living in. He just, he's just so tired. And, and the, the angel feeds him and he runs for 40 days. And he gets here to Mount Horeb, which is, by the way, 300 miles, 550 kilometers. He walked for 40 days. And as he got, he's now walking, walking, walking every day for 40 days. And as he gets to this mountain where he knows it's a mountain where God speaks to him, he goes up to the mountain and now he waits for God. Listening to what God says. Please put me up that last verse, the last four verses. Now just picture him standing in this cave. Just, uh, I think from verse 13, Yes. No, uh, verse 11. Thank you. Uh, one, one back, yeah, there you go. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. Now, Elijah's standing there. And behold, the Lord passed by. Listen, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. He's standing there waiting for God to speak to him. And next moment, this wind comes. <laughs> The wind blows in such a magnificent hurricane, level five, level six, that the wind actually breaks this mountain, the rocks into pieces. Can you just imagine the sound that he must have heard? And he's waiting for God to speak to him. And listen what the Bible says. He says, and behold, the Lord passed by in the mountains and break into the pieces, the rocks before the Lord. Next verse. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. He's standing there, the wind just passed, the rocks just broke. The next moment, this whole mountain is shaking. An earthquake. I used to be a youngster working in the mines many years ago, and I tell you, I, I've felt a few earthquakes in my life, especially underground. And, and some days I did stoping, which is in the gold mines. You work in a 90 centimeter place, and when the earthquake comes there, you, which comes sometimes twice, three times a day, you don't know when, what is going to happen. And yet the Bible says in the earthquake, the Lord was not. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. You see... If I can teach you something today, once we enter perilous times, 
once we enter a place in our life where, where things really go wrong, in, sometimes we look for, for God in the wrong places. We look for him in the fire. We look for him in the earthquake. We look for we want him to speak to us. Hey, Henry, you must stop what you're doing. Or Henry, I'm going to help you. You know, that's how we as human beings think. And Elijah thought the same way. He was looking for God in this thunder. He was looking for God in this wind. He was looking for God because he's just traveled 40 days through the desert. Now I tell you, the desert time in one's life is a difficult time. And I wonder if there's any pastors here, I can tell you now all of them has gone through some, some sort of desert in their life. Because that, that is one of the things you need to do to become a pastor. You have to walk in the desert. You have to walk when you're alone. And when everybody's turned against you. And the ones you've loved has rejected you. And you sit alone and you wonder, where is God? Lord, where are you? Where are you, Lord God? And the last verse says, And after the fire, a still, small voice. Listen. A still, small voice. And it was, and Elijah heard it. And he wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood entering out into the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him saying, what dost thou do here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Why have you lost faith? Why have you lost hope? Have I not carried you through? Did I not send the fire? When you prayed, did I not help you? When there was trouble in your life, did I not come for your sake and your help? Were I not there in the times of perilous times in the past? Why would I leave you now? Why would I leave you now? You see, sometimes when we go through difficult times, we think that God has left us. Do you know that the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God? So if it is impossible to please God, what do you think the devil's first plan is to rob from you? What do you think? If you should say, what does the devil want to rob from you? Your faith. In Luke, the last supper, Jesus, I think it's in Luke 24, I wrote it down somewhere. Jesus spoke to his disciples and he looked at his disciples and he, and he said to them these words, in my words, he said, Satan wanted to serve you as you sieve wheat. But Peter, I've prayed for you so your faith does not stop. Because God knew, Jesus knew that a couple of weeks from there, Peter was the one running back to the water without a shirt thinking, ah, all is lost. Jesus is dead. What happened to the disciples? He cruised. He was, he lost hope. Why do you think the Bible says the last three things that stays is Hope, faith, and love. Faith is important for you to sustain your life. Faith is important for you to stand up in the mornings. Faith is important for you. There's the scripture. Satan has desired to serve you as wheat. Uh, Luke 22. Let me conclude. The troubles that you are facing now. It's not God judging you. The, the, the husband that left you, the fight with your workmate, the, where you were fired, or, or whatever your circumstances, the sickness in your body, your father that died, your mother, God is not judging you because those things happened. God is teaching you. Because if the devil gets it right for you to think, listen how he works. If you think for a moment that God's grace is not sufficient for you, because by thinking that you will not make it, because of thinking that, that you have failed. How many of you have failed yet in your lives as Christians? Have you failed? I failed many times. I failed many times and I still fail today. But let me tell you something. The devil really wants you to believe that you are not good enough. And you know what is right? 
you are not good enough. Because the Bible says there's only one man who's good and that's God. Even Jesus said it. You are right. You are not good enough. But there is one who is a greater, greater father than you can ever imagine. And his name is Jesus. And he's paid the full price for you. And no matter how many shortfalls you have, no matter how many times you've fallen, no matter how, no matter how many times you've stumbled, no matter how many times you've made mistakes, no matter how many times you've done the wrong thing, just keep the faith. Keep the faith. God is in control in your life. Do you know that when God created you, He created your end before your beginning? So in other words, He knew all the faults and mistakes that you are going to make in your life. Yet He still created you. Yet He still loved you. Yet He still gave His Son for you. Yet He loves you. Now is that not a God able to serve is that not a God we can roam and shout out and say, this is the God I want to serve. He's great. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nissi. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's a supplier. He gives to all our needs. I'm finishing up. I understand failures. But you know the recipe. The Bible, there's one scripture that says, we need, I've, I've preached about it one day, but I've changed the words a little bit, but it comes down to feed yourself with words of faith. I, I, I just named it feed your face with faith. And how do you do that? Why do you think when, when Israel went through, uh, uh, when, when Joshua took the people, they went through the Jordan to take in Jericho, why was there 12 stones erected? Why? Why all through the Bible, there were certain times that God said, build an altar, build a house, build this. Do you know why? Because God wants you to look back on your life and to watch all the times that he's pulled you through out of situations where the situation was so dire, there was actually no way for you to get through it. There was actually no way for you to get through it, yet God pulled you through. And that is why it's important to look at these milestones in your life and realize that the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys. Do you know, in conclusion, that God, once, even though he was very upset with his people, he let them win a war just because their opposition said, now let's fight them. They fought them on the mountains and they, they lost and they said, the next day we will fight them in the valleys because they are good. And God said, let me show them I'm the God of the mountains and the God of the valleys. That is why when you start a business, when you start a business, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter where you are. I know all about business, but I'm telling you, if God's blessing is upon your life and you've heard right from him to start something, you start it no matter what other people say. Because you will always have people standing against you. And if you don't have people standing against you, something is wrong in your life. Because then you are, the devil is in a comfort zone with you. As long as there's people fighting you, as, as long as there's, you have to stand up every day and, and pull yourself together. To face this day, you must know God, God is in control of your life. It's, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That is why your faith is so important. That is why Jesus prayed for, for Simon Peter. He said, Simon, I will pray for you. And it was 50-50. Or Simon Peter fell. 50-50. Jesus told him that he's the rock. On his church, he, he will build his church. But when Peter denied Jesus... Have you ever felt once you've given your heart to the Lord and, and you've denied him or you've disappointed him, do you know how hard it is to forgive yourself? And that hardness, the hardship to forgive yourself does not come from God. It comes from the devil because he's the accuser of the brethren. That is his job. Your job is to have faith, sustainable faith that pulls you through any situation because God will not start to work in you and not finish it. The Bible says, his word says, that once you've started something in your life and in my life, he's able to finish it. Maybe, 
Maybe you've been fighting battles the last year. Maybe your business is suffering. Maybe your marriage is suffering. Maybe you're just so tired. You feel like, you feel like Elisha just saying, you know what? I'm hot full. I just want to run away. I just want to finish what I'm busy with. I, you know what? I know. I remember days that I felt this way. And maybe there's days that you're feeling that way. But the, the, the thing to remember is here. When you get to a situation where, where, where your, your faith is leaving you, do you know that happens? That sometimes our faith leaves us. It happened to Peter on, 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 on the sea of Galilee. He was walking. Jesus called him and he was walking on the water, brother. He's no, he's no lie. He was walking on the water. But when he saw the, the, the billows and he saw the wind, his faith departed. And when his faith departed, he sank. And Jesus had to help him. And Jesus will help you in the same way. I want to pray for you. Please stand on your feet. May the musicians come forward. I want to pray for you like Jesus said. I want to pray. I don't want to pray for you so you don't have tribulations. That would be out of the line of the Bible to pray. Because the Bible says in a lot of tribulations comes, um, what is the right word? Uh, Can some of the Bible scholars help me? It says through, through hardships comes what? Testing of your faith produces patience. The testing of your faith produces patience. Patience is an important virtue to have in your life. Dr. Rachel put on the group yesterday, she spoke about faith and patience. Now, while the music is playing, I'm not going to call you to the front today unless you want to come. I want, to, I want to pray a general prayer for you this morning. And, and if you're sitting, standing, or lying under this juniper tree, thinking, ah, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I, I've been trying so hard. I've been battling so much to get through over this hill. I'm here to tell you today that this word that God gave me is for you standing there. That God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will pull you through. Although, the, it, although this life of yours looks like a mountain maybe at the moment, maybe it looks like there's just no way to, to beat this situation. I'm telling you, God will help you. Just believe. Just trust Him with everything in your heart. And I want to pray this morning. Father, as your servant, as your servant, I pray for these people this morning, the ones who need faith. If you need faith this morning, put up your hand. If you need faith, put up your hand. Father, you see people who need faith this morning. I pray you, Jesus, like you prayed for Peter. I pray, may you please strengthen the faith of these people this morning. Help them. Give them the faith. Your your word says, Father, that if I ask you for a piece of bread, you will not give me a rock. If I ask you for a piece of fish, you will not give me a scorpion. And I pray you in Jesus' mighty name, please strengthen the faith of your people this morning. Because your word says when, when you come back, will you still find faith? And I pray this morning, will you please give us the gift of faith so we can trust you with everything in our hearts, no matter what the circumstances is. And Father, if there's people this morning battling with illnesses or ailments in their body, and and maybe people battling with their their spouses, their families, would you please give them the courage to go on and wait for your deliverance and wait for your answer. Father, don't let the devil rob us of the great things that you've given us. If you're standing in this place this morning, you have not yet given your life to Jesus. And you want opportunity, come forward now. First time, second time. If you have not given your life to Jesus this morning, God shows me there's a person here this morning. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this is your chance. third time if you have not given your life fully to Jesus Christ today is your day you don't know if you have another day you don't know if God is if you will live tomorrow this is your day 
Anybody? Father, I thank you for your people that came together this morning. I pray and ask you and beg you for this word to stay with us in our hearts. Help us to understand that we need faith to survive and faith to please you. I plead the blood of Jesus over these people and I pray and ask your, your, your greatest love and, and may you command your blessing on each and every one. Father, bring us back at the appointed time and may your name and your wonderful, wonderful God, wonderful name Jesus Christ be exalted in our lives every day of our lives. I pray for this holiday season ahead. May you please protect your children. May you protect us, the people who drive. May you hold, keep them under the blood. Bring us, bring us at the point of time back together, Father. Bless us all the ones who go on holiday. May you keep them under your blood and bring them back to their families and to their loved ones. I thank you for this opportunity in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may sit. <laughs>